Okay, it's uh, a pleasure to meet you for the first time, uh, Mr. Woodson Payne. And our purpose today is to uh, basically hear your story about and your viewpoints about Awaspi, the New Age Bible. And it's been, a, it's, I know it's a very interesting one. So uh, anyway, I'll try to ask good questions or I'll just let you talk also. And so please, would start where you'd like to start. Um, well, I just want to say that uh, my grandfather and my dad uh, had a waspy um, long before I was born. I don't know exactly how how early they got it, but um, I got a hold of a waspy when I was about thirteen years old. Me too. And yeah, and so uh, kind of a rite of passage, I guess. <laughs> And uh, so Still very young for a book like that. Uh, well, it it took um, joining a cult to actually read it cover to cover, and uh, uh, I still read it. Uh, I don't. I don't necessarily. Uh, you know, I'm still looking at a lot of the claims and everything. But basically, what happened to me is my father was in touch with. Uh, uh Ray Schlipman and Virginia Howard in um Four Winds Village for I don't know if it was called Four Winds Village at that time um anyway my dad went out there and visited them and uh he came back with some newsletters and stuff and some way he got in touch with uh Universal Light Mary Lou Brown mm -hmm. in Anaheim California and um, I and my younger brother and my two best friends got recruited into her orbit. And before you know it, we were, uh, it was a short time and we, we moved from uh, Houston to uh, Anaheim, California mm -hmm. uh, to, uh, joined this faithist group and um, it wasn't um, that crazy in the beginning um, it, it was a pretty normal situation but um, you know I don't know what Mary Lou Brown's uh, exact diagnosis was but she was um, basically uh, somebody that was uh, a little off as a child, and uh, she had her own, um, she had a very strong Catholic upbringing, and so hmm. she was already having experiences inside the Catholic Church, which um, kind of makes me think that she is, uh, was a schizophrenic, but I, I'm not qualified to make that, but she was definitely paranoid, let's put it that way. Wow. And uh, if I interrupt real quickly, uh, I was raised as a Catholic too, and I think maybe you're referring to the guilt complex that many Catholics go through with all the at least at least old older people like me who the Catholic Church was more uh, damnation and fire and things. Um. Yeah, her experience was. Um, she, she wanted to be God's secretary as a child, and uh, she fantasized about being God's secretary. So when the wasp came along for her in the, I'm guessing the sometimes in the late 50s or early 60s, mm -hmm. uh, she was already primed for that role. And um, so about... Um, Four months, three months after uh, we went to Anaheim, um, a couple of other people joined, and um, and then er Ernie uh, Gardner came from um, St. Louis, Missouri, and um, uh, there was a, another lady uh, from Barbados. She was um, originally from Barbados. She came from Boston. Uh, another lady came from Colorado, I believe, 
and um, another man from Wisconsin, uh, a gentleman from Iceland. Um, and so before you know it, we had like 15 people. Mm. And um, as time went on, um, it kind of evolved from uh, just a regular get together where you talk and, and you know, everybody's um, kind of had free will. Uh, it went from that and to um, after about four months, six months, uh, she changed and she, uh, Mary Lou Brown became this authoritarian figure that was going to uh, be the intermediary between us and the creator. So she pretty much took on a, a false god <laughs> uh, position, kind of being an intermediary. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, she became more authoritarian and she was demanding uh, more and more of our personal time. And before you know it, um, we were, she consumed uh, 20 hours a day easily of our time from- 20 hours. Uh, yeah, every day, uh, six in the morning till um, um, 11, 12 at night. Uh, sometimes longer, sometimes one or two, 2 a.m., just depends on what was happening. But um, we had a regular routine. And then um, she was under the influence of a guy named John Cook, who was a con artist uh, from Peoria, Illinois. And uh, he went by several names, but at that time he was going by. But uh, I apologize. <laughs> uh, I've got a video about math that just popped up because it flipped over. Okay. Anyway, sorry for the interruption. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, John Cook uh, was going around the country uh, scamming. Um, Owaspi Bible students uh, with uh, a story that he was actually, he claimed he was actually John F. Kennedy and was uh, shot right. in the head in Dallas. And uh, he had a long convoluted story, but anyway, he was- Is this Ray, is this Ray Slipman? Who? Ray Slipman, who you mentioned? No. no, no, no. Nothing to do with him, okay. Nothing to do with him whatsoever. No, this was a guy from Illinois that was a con artist, and he would write letters to Cosman Voice uh, in Arizona and say that he was John F. Kennedy and that he was still alive. And then some poor sucker would write uh, Cassandra and get his address, and then he'd start uh, working these people over for their life savings. And um, he came. He eventually, we heard about him and he eventually came to uh, Anaheim and joined the cult temporarily. Mm -hmm. um, so um, this con game that he was running was uh, about him claiming that the head of the mafia found a waspy before he passed away and he in his will, the quote unquote godfather left all of his money to the faithist movement. And um, so this guy, John Cook claimed that this mafia uh, Don had, or godfather had left him, uh, had singled him out to be executor of this great estate of money that was given to the faithist movement. Uh, well, me, may I ask you, how did Mary Lou Brown react to all of this? Did she well, yeah. or? Oh, John Cook would had been working on her for years, long before we ever got there. So she was already primed. Uh, she was just basically repeating what a con artist had told her. And some way he was, he uh, just latched on to all of these people that he was uh 
taking their life savings and uh and excuse, so, me, excuse me how did what was the con um presentation why would they give their money to him what was the what was the rationale he was giving them that it, um well he would he was he was saying that there was going to be a, a well i think uh Mary Lou Brown was mainly promoting that there was going to be a worldwide faithist movement and that uh, we were going to inherit um, hundreds and uh, hundreds of millions of dollars uh, in this Mafia Don's uh, mm -hmm. um, estate. And this, how he played into it is he was executor of the will uh, and he could he would be controlling the money per se uh but the whole thing was made up and we were on under such pressure to conform to whatever mary lou brown said and we were all pretty much afraid of her because she controlled everybody either by being really sweet and uh love bombing you or she uh, flew into rages and just um, called you out in front of 30 people and harassed and browbeat and, and pretty much bullied you for however many days it took, took to break, break you down. And uh, I saw her, uh, you know, like one time she violent, violent, violently attacked uh, Ernie Gardner for coming in late uh, he was working some job uh, as a commercial artist and he came in at like 401 or something and we were supposed to start at four and so she just uh, he carried uh, these uh, uh, horsehair brushes with him to work he didn't leave him at work he carried him with him back and forth because they're very expensive even in those days they were uh, horsehair brushes and uh so she just uh stomped on all of his belongings and destroyed all of these uh very expensive uh uh brushes that he painted and drew, drew with uh, every day at work and so uh she kind of turned into a crazy monster and about that time she had this idea to uh issue a credit card to anybody that would come to Anaheim and join her group. So she claimed, and I, I have an application for a, a Faithless credit card that I may have sent you. If not, I'll send it to you again. But basically you fill out your name and you promise to be a vegetarian and uh, you're supposed to receive a credit card that was backed up by this mafia inheritance. So that was the scam. So our little, she had a newsletter, she had a printing press in her house, offset printing press. And she had a readership of about 70 people, 75 people. That was her entire reading uh, mailing list for her newsletter. Well, she sent out this uh free credit card scam that she was running with uh, john cook and like overnight we went to a thousand people on her mailing list and later on uh, years later she told me uh it was around 1800 1900 people that were on her list uh of people that wanted a credit card <laughs> and uh you know looking back it it all sounds very humorous but and unbelievable but you have to remember we were being fed like a starvation diet of like 60 calories a day at some point and we were being kept up from like five in the morning to 11 12 one o'clock two o'clock every night uh with all of these activities that she generated can and I pause, can i pause you right there I just sure. want to give some perspective to the people who may not know so much about cultism and that I'd like to say is Owaspi is a very unique book. It's a history of angelic heavens. It purports it anyway. And it's spiritualism in essence, that's what it is. And 
it has some great concepts about you know helping one another and being of service and people see that kind of thing and they go wow this is really cool i'm all in and once they do that you you have this you make you make the bad assumption that if anybody reads this book and says it's the basis for their organization you especially since there is no formal organization that you may have heard of yet you tend to jump in and say wow so they're they're for a waspy so whatever they say must be true so i'm all in does that sound right to you oh well i'll take it a step further um my frame of view is you may even think they're perfectly sane by what what they're selling you but um a lot of faithists are are not really streetwise and they're when i was growing up they were pretty much uh, middle class white background for the most part and um suburban kids um people that live in the suburbs not just middle class people uh and uh primarily uh, i would say uneducated uh, they didn't have the the cognitive skills to deal with somebody that's uh, a borderline uh, narcissist and and um, sociopath, and so we got manipulated by this person, and there was constant pressure on us uh, from Mary Lou Brown. Um, to go along with anything she said, uh, Arnold Aries, uh, she had some crazy thing she was promoting. She was always promoting something new. Uh, and Arnold Aries was thrown out of the group for uh, oh. laughing, giggling uh, at some crazy thing she came up with. And uh, she just immediately threw him out of the group. He had uh, dropped out of uh, college at Berkeley to come join this group and the the moment uh, he disagreed with her he was out well, he so was, was, may, may i just add i he's a a really good writer i would say too i, I know him from i've read some of his writings and he's a very inspired kind of guy yeah and uh he was uh i think an english teacher at um it in Mount Baldy, uh, out on the west, <laughs> it's either Riverside or San Bernardino County. He was the teacher of the year uh, for one year. And then the following year he was fired because he took his students out to somewhere uh, down in San Diego where the flying saucers were supposed to land. <laughs> and the administration got wind of this and fired him. Wow. And, uh, but he was a uh, he's he's the one that originally went around and interviewed all of these different faithist groups after he left Mary Lou Brown's. And if you look back in some of your online uh, copies of Faithist Journal uh, or um, Cosmic Voice, um, you'll see his. Um, uh, writing and you'll see where he went around and interviewed some of these people and he puts a big fat warning on a lot of these groups he says beware this is a very controversial group even amongst the faithists uh and um mary lou brown was one of them but there were other ones that uh had a really uh jaded history I, I found out later after that thing was written uh i ran into people that had been in those other uh groups and they had really uh harrowing experiences much worse than i had but the yes, one i had uh, may I interrupt you again uh can you think of do you know i've actually got a, a lot of, i've got almost all the issues from faith the journal and cosmic voice and uh, I'm trying to remember. Do you remember the names of any of the groups that he went to? Just off uh, one was uh, Brothers of Shalom. I think it was called. Um, um, they were up in Albion, California, at one time, and then they moved up into Oregon. But uh, uh, and they, they were they had some child molestation going on. Does that sound right? 
Yeah, I found out, I visited them before joining Mary Lou Brown and they were just a bunch of hippies living in uh, plastic domes on the side of a mountain. And um, they had these grand ideas that they were gonna save the world. But uh, I, you know, I found out later that they were um, three uh, homosexual priests, <laughs> waspy priests that uh, had in, been involved in uh, drugging some runaway boys, uh, I think 14 and 16 year old boys. Um, I interviewed the older uh, boy in 2000 and was trying to get his younger brother to testify against them. And I was trying to get the FBI interested in following up on this, but we couldn't locate the younger uh, brother and um, uh, we were trying to locate uh, these three people that had this Shalom Brotherhood because um, they had moved on to Oregon. So, um, but I was working um, off and on talking to the FBI, you know, he, they said, if you can find this guy, we'll go talk to him. But uh, I, I couldn't find the younger brother and I couldn't find um, these three uh, waspy charlatans. <laughs> and uh, so that's kind of where that one left off. But I, I did meet somebody in 1995 at the Global Council uh, at meeting, summer meeting at Bass Lake. And he um, said that he was a member of that group uh, and he confirmed some of the things that went on. And I later found that um, uh, the leader of that group, uh, his first name was Ray. I'm not going to say his last name, but um, I found uh, that he was on um, uh, a list of uh, sexual predators. He had done five years in prison for rape. Uh, sometime after <clears throat> I left that, I just visited them for two, a week or two weeks, um, and left, but, um, either that year or the following year, he, uh, went to prison for five years for kidnapping a lady down in Oakland and raping her. So, um, that group had a really bizarre history. Yeah. So yeah, I, I'd like, I, I'd like. Oh, go ahead. Finish your thought, but I'd like to say yeah, something. Yeah, my point is, uh, like you said, you know, you think you, you meet somebody that's uh, read a waspy and... Um, they wouldn't be into rape. Well, no, that they, they would be a, a, just a normal person like you. You know, there, there's a lot of uh, <clears throat> students and, you know, just normal people involved in this, but not everybody that reads a waspy is legit and on the up and up. And you have to be careful. Uh, I would say uh, 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 the number one warning would be, uh, you know, uh, ask to see a driver's license so you can get their real name. Uh, case in point, uh, at Anaheim where we were, nobody was allowed to tell anyone in the group your real name where you were from or, or anything. So mm -hmm. we could have a, uh, a murderer <laughs> come and join the group and we would never know that these people had a criminal history or we would have no way to check them out because we didn't know who was in, in the group. Um, uh. Uh, I knew who was in the group because they were my friends in high school and my younger brother came with me. So the core people I knew personally before joining the group, but strangers came and went and um, people were not allowed to even say your own name to the other person. And you couldn't even talk to them at one point. You, you had to write it down on a piece of paper, but you weren't allowed to share any personal information. And uh, if you said anything, uh, Mary Lou Brown had uh, spies in the group that would report you to her and then she would 
uh, call you on the carpet and grill you about what you said two days ago. And uh, it, it was like living in a, a really like a concentration camp. There was no physical beatings that I ever saw. No, um, in our particular group, there was no uh, drug use or alcohol use or um, physical abuse, except that one incident with Ernie Gardner. Uh, but uh, there was a lot of uh, mental abuse. So when you when you read a wasp band, you think, oh yeah, that's that's a great book. And oh, I just met Joe Blow uh, online, and he seems like a really nice person. Well, he may not be. He may be, and he may not be. And uh, it's all right to correspond with these people, but if you're thinking about moving on to a rural property uh, with a stranger, you best to check out and see if they have a criminal history, uh, if they're on a child uh, molester watch list, uh, anything can happen. Uh, case in point, this guy, John Cook, who John was put as John F. Kennedy, uh, let me just finish. Okay. Uh, he, he later changed his name to James Christie, showed up in Kingman, Arizona, and was passing him himself off as James Christie. Uh, Christie and uh, he made a death threat against the president, and he was being watched by the Secret Service. The Secret Service came and uh, interviewed Cassandra Cares, and uh, she knew all about it. Everybody on the West Coast knew about this guy, but they didn't know he was in Mary Lou Brown's group until um, 96, you know, 20 years later. So just because they say they're Rita Waspies, it's not a, <laughs> it's not a get out of jail pass. It's, uh, you have to be careful because there are some people that will take advantage of you. I, I know uh, for the most part, um, most people that do read a Waspy are uh, pretty honest, hardworking people, but there's a few bad apples around there that uh, you never know what they're up to. So you have to be careful. It's okay. Uh, thank you for that, uh, Woodson. I just want to, we only have a few minutes left, but I'd just like to say that I too joined Mary Lou Brown's group. Not I was not in the group the same time as you were. Uh, I saw, she gave a big uh, declaration in the Cosm Voice newsletter about her being the goddess of Earth, the red star. So I wrote to her and we started having phone calls and she started sending me some of her newsletters and other materials of different kinds of prayers and rites. Right. And, and I even had a vision where what she described, I saw it in my vision. So I thought, wow, this must be, this confirms that what she, where I'm on the right path. And so my friends started getting worried about me because I was, you know, trying to follow, trying to do, trying to explain that I thought the world was going to end or that they had to start reading. I, I, I was becoming more indoctrinated as time went on. I, so for about a year, this went on and she got me a job interview with Lockheed. Her husband worked there. So I flew out there and I was going to meet her actually go into the group. This is in 1984. Uh, but before I met her, I, we had a phone call and she said something like, are you a virgin? I said, yeah, well, you better go see a prostitute. And I said, really? And yes, you need to, to get this out of your system. I said, well, uh, I don't think so. And so that strange, bizarre conversation convinced me I should have nothing more to do with her. So, so I went back to my home state of Michigan and uh, it ended it, it all ended for me for then and there but um, but I but I was indoctrinated I, I I read her newsletter she's very convincing we talked for hours on the phone and um, it just goes to show you but I was young I was like 20 in my young early 20s so it just goes to show you you really need to watch out and think very carefully when you're dealing all about dealing with uh, things of a religious or spiritual matter where you pledge yourself to work together as a community. That's all I have to say. Yeah, I'll, I'll say one final thing about um, 
I mean, there's so much more to this whole story. Uh, we were waiting for a UFO rescue. And oh, I remember that. I was we, told that. We were waiting for a worldwide revolution and mm -hmm. pretty much looked like Syria all over the world. <laughs> and uh, we were on, uh, under this uh, intense pressure to confirm, uh, conform to the group and, and not make any waves. And um you know you mentioned that you had a vision quote unquote well yeah everybody in this group had a vision confirming everything that mary lou brown said we had thousands upon thousands and it's not so much that we had visions is we were having post traumatic stress disorder and this was these visions were the result of this extreme pressure and this stream physical uh, stress on our bodies from being up. I, I'd like to interrupt you just real quick. I, I'm sure what you're saying is true, but I'd also like to add is there's a group of spirits who work with Mary, Blue, Mary Lou Brown who are trying to control you. They, they, get act, they get connections to you through Mary Brown and then they can invade your mind basically. And that's one reason you be, do become indoctrinated and obsessed is because of the dark spirits who try to possess you or at least influence you in bad ways to mislead. Well, I, I'm, I'm have to agree with that one. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of dark spirits around that woman. Um, but um, it's, but and be careful. Okay. Those, those, those can be very dangerous uh, affirmations that are untrue. And um, you, you think you're getting a message from on high that's confirming what somebody else is saying, but yeah, good point. it's not on, on high. I don't know where it's from, but it's it uh, it's, from, it's, it's, from a dark, it's, it's from a dark hell. realm, uh, let me yeah. tell you. And they'll trick you every time. Yeah. It's, uh, Keep your faith in the creator, the inner highest light within yourself don't 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 look for someone else to be your boss or your god yeah really or your group leader be true to yourself think for yourself and uh be be nice to people <laughs> yeah that's that's a good thing be nice to people but um uh, there's 